My hometown is Fort Worth in the state of Texas, but I've been away for a long time. I've made many videos about traditional culture in Vietnam, where I currently live, but on my first trip back to Fort Worth in more than a decade, I finally have the honor of learning a bit about the traditional culture where I'm from. And there is no better place to do that than the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. If you know anything about the state of Texas, it's probably cowboys. And I'm not talking about the football team that breaks my heart every year. There is nothing more iconically linked to cowboys than the cowboy hat. Sometimes known as a 10-gallon hat, its reputation is as big as the Lone Star State itself. And upon returning home, I decided it's about time I got myself one. My whole life I grew up wearing hats. Uh, it, it's something that's been a part of me since before I was born, my dad, uh, when he was my age, went to a family-owned store called Fincher's White Front in the stockyard, and his friend shaped hats there. And it was he grew up kind of being like that. I mean, his best friend was shaping hats, so so therefore, whenever I needed my first job, the kids that they knew the family really well, I'm like, hey, let's give them a job. Though I could have picked from any number of vendors to buy from, Raul's passion and love for hats made the choice an easy one. So you started at Ventures? Ventures, yeah. Oh, cool. Not even shaping hats, man. I'm talking yeah. you know, the, the current cleaning windows, uh, cleaning hats. But, I mean, that's when I was just kind of falling Just to up. be around it. Yeah, and I always caught myself whenever I had to be folding jeans, I was cleaning hats. Getting the perfect hat requires a bit of work, from material to color to size to shape, but I had no idea the level of detail that could go into a single hat when put in the hands of an expert like Raul. The first thing I need to think of is the function of my hat. For wannabe cowboys like myself, fashion is a big part of the hat, but a hat has far more value than just what it looks like. My dad is not even really for fashion, it's more of a use, use. function. I mean, he, he sweats in them, he, I mean, it's just, it saved his head. I mean, he sent me a picture of, he had what we call a mule kick. A mule kick is when old time priest where that kick is right there in the front and I was like how'd you get that in your hat and he was on the horse putting them up in the stall and the pipe hit his head oh. and he but he was it was kind of funny he was laughing about it but he was like man that cowboy hat kind of saved my head size and color are the next step since I'm representing Texas with my hat I got the color called pecan the state tree of Texas and the tastiest nut I ever did eat the steam you see Raoul putting on the hat is to heat the fibers of the hat so they become more malleable. The material of a felt hat can be anywhere from wool on the low end to rabbit to 100% beaver on the high end. Each kind of fur reacts differently to the heat and binds to a different degree once the hat cools. When they're making this, a pure beaver, once it gets the right amount of heat, I mean, they lock up and they'll, they'll get the big part. Uh, and that's what you want to hear, you know? There's guys who don't even care about the brand. They'll come, they'll see, hey, let me see your hats. They'll, they'll feel it. And then that's when, you know, that, knowing that etiquette. They don't even care about the brand. It's like a watermelon. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, on my budget, I can't drop a cool grand on a hat. So I go with wool. But Raul doesn't treat me like a second-rate customer. And he gives my hat the same attention he'd give a beaver hat. In fact, he throws in some extra steps to make sure my hat keeps its shape. What we're doing is we're stabilizing that brand. You know, what you do on this, this is something that was truly invented by a gentleman named Gary Cole. He's a legend hatter out there in Houston, Texas. He did anyone famous from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, he shaped their hat. And this is something that he invented that as, as, a, as a hatter, you know, knowing how to make what goes into a hat. And so having the right tool, you can really I mean, make a lower end hat feel painted. Once the hat is shaped, he can focus on the brim, which requires a 
a completely different set of skills. Off the shelf, the brim is long, so he trims it to the right size. Just like that, Woo. you have half of an inch off, you know? And if you look, you can see the fibers that are actually blended, like the, the different hairs. Since the edge is now rough, he needs to bevel it and sand it so it has the right feel before he can put in something called a pencil curl. Very hipsterish. So there's some people out in California and Los Angeles who would definitely like something like that. Just wear it that it's kind way. Of hipster, you know, you can wear it. But what we're going to do is we're doing the best of both. So now we're going to kind of western it up a little bit. Yeah. I, I prefer to go more Western than hipster. Oh, yeah. I sure. appreciate that. <laughs> this is called a Fort Worth Mule Kid. A what? A Fort Worth Mule Kid. Fort Worth Mule Kid. Yeah, I do. <laughs> If you see this, uh, it's just like an old question, you'll see a lot of hats like this. I like that. That's cool, man. Yeah, I like that. The fit, fit is great. This hat's gonna look really cool when they're brand new, but what I did just subtly is gave it a little bit of a worn in look. So that way when you wear it, it looks just natural. But something like this looks really cool. Yes, brand new, but it's always had some character to it, you know? So now I just did it really light, so therefore you can start adding that character. And just feel how stiff that is now. I mean, so that's... Yeah, that's I'll, not going anywhere. No, yeah. With a leather band, the hat is ready to wear. But am I really ready to wear this hat? The hat doesn't make the man, but the man makes the hat. So. I need to learn how to take care of the hat. And more importantly, I need to learn hat etiquette before I feel truly comfortable sporting this sucker. You know, I, I always, when I introduce myself, I'm like, hi, you know, if you're a lady, if it's a guy, I'll, just, I'll give you a firm hand. Yeah, of course. And of course. leave it like that. But yeah. it's a sign of respect. I, my boss always said, if, if you can wear your boots inside, you can wear your hat. But if I was at my grandma's table, I always make sure I put my hat underneath my, my at the table. You know, if I'm at the table, I don't wear a hat. You know, you say grace, you take off your hat. Say and, grace. And, uh, uh, but I mean, national anthem, you take off your hat. I tell you what, Raul makes me proud to be Texan. It's this kind of hard work and passion that made Texas what it is today. Texas isn't just stars and cowboy hats, but people. People like Raul Garcia, who dedicate themselves to something and put everything they have into it. Now that I have a cowboy hat shaped and styled by one of the best hat artists in the game, well, I guess it's time I go out and do some cowboy stuff.